In the next segment, we will hear our champions describing a very specific part of a pigeon's anatomy. Located on the upper portion of the bird's throat, at the back, is a fleshy curtain. In order to get these images, we had to use special micro lenses to help you understand how small this area of the bird's respiratory tract actually is, here is an image of a $20 bill. The lens we used will show you this much of the bill, approximately 6 millimeters or 1 quarter inch in width. I was very fortunate that uh, about 30 years ago when I first started going over to Belgium, I, I met Paul Holterman. And being in a quest for knowledge, so to speak, I questioned him on all sorts of things. And he showed me what he learned from Albert de Kaiser, who years and years ago in Belgium was a, everybody's hero with the pigeons. Albert de Kaiser said to me, you take a pigeon, it must be a pair for model and a throat. But I said, what is that, a throat? And then he learns me, how do you must looking in the throat of a patient? The Belgian word for throat is keel. And a lot of fanciers, when they try to um, translate the articles that, the, that, that they read many years ago, when the Belgians referred to the keel of a pigeon, they weren't talking about the breast, they were talking about the throat. Some English um, have Dutch magazines and they read about keel, but Keel is the throat, and I think it's the keel. Yeah, that may lead to misunderstandings because they have those uh, Belgian Dutch magazines to see the results, try to understand a bit of it, and that may lead to misunderstandings. Yeah. When I heard it, I had already won several national races, and I was sceptical. I thought oh, it was just another theory, like the wing theory and the eye theory, but it isn't. It works, and. Uh, you do need to look in, you need to look for every angle. The Belgians, they look to the pigeon's throat and they call it the motor. You wonder why they call it the motor. But when you think about it, the throat, it's got to be called a motor because this is how the oxygen gets into the pigeon. And without oxygen, he can't perform. It has to go into his body, into his lungs, then into his bloodstream. And then that's where the energy comes from. I think it's been found that a pigeon beats his wings in one hour 35,000 times. That's hell of a lot of work. The oxygen has got to come into the body to help him do this. He's got to fill his air sacs, breathe out, breathe in, fill his air sacs, breathe out, breathe in. I think he has to do that every time he flaps his wings. So everything must be 100%. The throat and the head, the sinus system, to put it into human terms, is very, very important with pigeons. I've only actually realised this probably the last five years, how important it is. So the more perfect that pigeon's throat is, the more perfect the motor is. Most people, Good volunteers will look for a good throat, so they will. And a pigeon healthy, without, with a pigeon with rest may not win. A pigeon that can't breathe, it's like yourself, you're, you're not winning. You can't breathe, you can't win, you can't do anything. But uh, any pigeon I've seen, good ones, if you look at the throat, the good throat ventilation, the slit in the throat will be straight at the back. When I go to the loft and I make a report, I sit on, on the fencer, don't speak one word. Uh, you give me your pigeons. And I will say, test your best. And 95% he said, it is correct. It is my best. And that is again the truth. But watch out when uh, what we uh, talked about before, if a pigeon is under stress, then the, the throat is no good. But the pigeon that always has a bad throat, it's also too red, that's for sure a bad pigeon. It's uh, very important indeed, uh, pigeons have a perfect uh, respiration. I didn't learn about a pigeon's throat overnight. 
And then eventually, I started seeing a pattern. This one, with a terrible throat, that was one of my favourite pigeons, I lost him. And these pigeons that I thought, well, that's not as good as him, won a first prize. His throat. <laughs> that was the first time I saw ten points. Uh, the throat, the larynx, and the, uh, the nostrils, even the eyes, they're all very, very important and all interconnected. If a pigeon can't breathe, he can't win. The colour of the, of the throat must be perfect. Uh, they can't be swollen. They must be, uh, the air must go easy to the inside of the respiratory uh, and, have, uh, and bring the oxygen to the blood. So everything has to be smooth and without infection or without swollen uh, respiratory tract. But the throat of a pigeon, I have said it all, you can not learn it in completely summer, when they bread, when the cock is after his hen, when, so, and when they comes with eggs, now in November. That is the best date you can. And then I will select pigeons and then I am sure 90%, I said not 100% because it is not possible, 100%, but 90% I can say this one must away, this one is good. It's very important when you look at the throat of a pigeon, that the pigeon is calm. I like to close all the cockbirds in their nest box the evening before and then go in the loft the following morning with my book and take each one carefully in my hand. It is real important for people picking up pigeons even for breeding again. If the throat's not right, if the respiratory isn't right, they're not going to breed. A bad pigeon's not going to be a good one, definitely. When I open a pigeon's mouth, which I must stress, you have to do very, very carefully. You don't go in it like a bull in a china shop and wrench the pigeon's mouth open. You look very carefully and you look to the back of the mouth. And at the back of the mouth, there is a curtain. And the curtain is in two parts, just like they've been pulled together. The throat theory, it's not really a theory, it's a fact. What you want is one where they're put together and hanging dead straight and you can barely see the line. Open a little bit, doesn't matter too much, but hanging at a wrong angle and open too wide, creased, no. It's got to be right straight in the middle, a line and the curtain nice and even both sides. And that is the perfect throat. And you don't see too many. You don't see too many. Um, if you look in the throat and the pigeon has had a bad race, by the throat I mean the curtain at the back of the throat, uh, it will show there. It will show exactly the same there as it shows in the feather. There will be the equivalent of a fret mark. And if, you, if that pigeon has had an sufficient stress, the throat will be wide open and that pigeon basically is finished. It's as simple as that. All my boards, you have a habit of looking at, and all the champions, not one of them has a bad throat. All the same, just like peas in a pod. And you'll get a jossar and he'll have that cricket throat and that cricket slit at the back. The first time I was turned on to it was when we went with, uh, Frank and I went to, with Paul Elterman to, uh, I forget the man's name, but he was, he was a big gambler on the pigeons and he had a terrific mealy cock that had just flown out of this world that season. And uh, he gave it, proudly he gave it to Paul to handle and uh, Paul says, yeah, nice pigeon, he's having a look at it and all. And he says, if you race this pigeon next year, you'll lose it. And he says, oh, don't be silly, this is the so-and-so and he gave it a name. He said, he has won so many million Belgian francs. He says, that's ridiculous. You know, he says, I'll tell you, if you lose that, Race that pigeon next year, you will lose it. And he says, write his name on this door, which he did. And when we went back that late last year, the next year, the pigeon had gone. He'd gone in the first race. How did he know that? He knew it from the throat. I was over at Frank's house, it was probably somewhere about four years ago. And he took me in this year and he showed me what to look for. Um, what way the throat has got to lie, 
what has got to be there for the bird to breed, what has got to be there for the pigeon to race. And I would say over the summer, past four or five years since we've got the grips with us here, our results have really started to change. We're breeding better pigeons. Our performances are coming up on a weekly basis. Yeah, and I think if you start with a, with a, a bunch of pigeons, um, you grade them on the throat from 10 down, have a look through them. If you've got a cock and a hen with two good throats, obviously the best throats, put those two together and they will tend to breed good throats. Not always, but proportionally they will tend to breed better throats. It will be one of the most important factors, like it has to be. A healthy pigeon, a healthy pigeon is going to breed. He has to breed to perform. For the breeding loft, I like to see 10 points in a pigeon's throat. In the racing loft, I will accept eight points because not all the pigeons have 10 points. And on a longer distance pigeon, you'll find that they carry slightly less, eight points. But it's still good. Eight points is still good. There's lots of pigeons out there with no points at all. I give on the best pigeon 10 points. A little male, nine points. But when I give eight points, then it, for breeding, it's possible that you have a good pigeon with eight points for breeding. But then, when it is a hen, you must give him a cock with ten points. Because when I go by each fencer, they must have 18 together in the throat. But for the breeding loft, I like to see them with ten points, the cocks especially. Hens, you don't find too many with 10 points, but nine and eight, yes. And when I pair the pigeons together, I put 10 points with eight points. That way, it's a combination of 18 points. If I put eight points with eight points, I found through experience that the good pigeons don't come from there. They must have two times a couple 18 points but better 19 and still better 20. If you have a pigeon with a bad throat and a pigeon with a good throat, I know now which one I would keep. Several years ago, they would be both pigeons to me, you know. That is my, that is, the, that is Paul Holterman's biggest secret is the throat of the pigeon and the throat, there you can see the motor 